Welcome to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. Jimmy is a veteran U.S. Navy SEAL, a former protective officer for the CIA Global Response Staff, founder and CEO of the Able Shepherd Program, a husband and father of four, and a personal friend of mine. Now here's Jimmy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. I'm your host, Jimmy Graham, your BK. How's it going? What's up, Able Shepherd 051? What's up, 001? Zero one. <laughs> Ought one. Um, this episode brought to you by Able Nation. Can I like break protocol here and just talk about Neil Pinkham for a second? It is your podcast, so I think it's approved, yeah. Man, see how easy that Stuck is? Cool. I had lunch with the Sage today. And uh, man, that dude has done so much for this this program and for Jimmy Graham in my life mm-hmm. and in this business. And it, it's it's bittersweet, but you know he's retiring and he's going to be heading to Louisiana in uh, probably quarter two of this year. And that kind of landed, man. You can see it in his eyes. We were at the our, our kickoff event, yep. uh, the 2022 kickoff event over at Alpha Charlie's. Thanks, Alpha Charlie's. Thanks, Melissa, for setting it up and all that. And it was just it was just this this heavy feel it was this honoring like do people do that anymore is it just us i don't even know man like you walk in the room and there's this heavy and you look at a gun he looks at you and it's just like this eyes watering because we're so he remembers where this was when he stepped into the mix oh yeah right and it's just a big deal it really is and i I don't think we uh we uh we honor that enough but it was just it was cool man and i think it's hard to put into words how much how deep his reach is the the way he can think the way he can see the future for lack of a better word the way he can organize jimmy graham's thoughts and yeah. actions and put up with it and then and, and, and and he didn't try to keep up he's just like man yeah. yeah go be you and uh yeah and and the things that he does they can't come from someone that hasn't been there yeah. like you know what i mean yeah. like there's somebody once they've been there and they 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 do something for you or they honor you and it comes from a place of brother i've been where you've been and i'm gonna do x and it lands, right? I've had other people try to do things and you can tell that they they just haven't lived that. So you appreciate the gesture, but it's it's just not at that level. Yeah. So anyways, that just popped into my head. But this episode brought to you by by Able Nation. So quick uh, recap, if you don't know who Able Nation is, um, we ran into issues when we were trying to collectively help move the needle towards good, specifically in churches, schools, to try to make kids safer. So all of them, obviously, but, but obviously uh, kids. And then we ran into, I can't afford it. There's not a budget. So we said, what if that wasn't an excuse anymore? So we launched Able Dash Nation, a co-founder. He runs it. And man, we could go on and on about the things that we've done, even an amazing thing this year. This isn't what this podcast is about, but we got text uh, yesterday and today just from a grateful person that we supported um, that is just, it's just heartwarming and, and it's, uh, it's just amazing. So that whole, we can't afford it isn't a thing anymore. We say, what if that wasn't a problem, what an issue? And then we fund it, not, not me and Neil, meaning this community yeah. Yeah. and, and the, the outreach stuff that we do funds it. And uh, we just wouldn't take no for an answer. And I love it. So if you're in that position and you're trying to protect your school, church, or civic group, and the budget's an issue because we know things are tight, then reach out to, to Neil at able-nation.org. Help us take that, can't afford it, out of the equation and get some things done. Cool. Thank you, brother. Love you, Sage. All right. What are we talking about, man? We got like sidetracked, but it's good stuff. Um, time to model right. <clears throat> I hear everybody talking about what's wrong. Yeah, I'm sick of it. Voices about what's wrong. I don't care to hear. I know what's wrong. Like I got the news, and I got everybody barking in my ear about what's wrong, and I think it's time to model what's right. So, like many things we've talked about in my childhood, whether it be with my my walk or with um, the the business or whatever, I really wish that I'd have had. You know, and and Pinkham is one of those guys. You know, it's like let's we we had a saying we started in this endeavor that we're going to do it right or we're not going to do it. Like this dog eat dog. This uh, fight fire with fire. We know now that that just creates a bigger fire. You know, all of these things, you're like, okay, I get it that that's what the world says, but as Christian men, we're not supposed to do that. So I said, we're going to do this right or we're not going to do it. And he said, we can do it right. I said, really? Because I've I've heard that said, but can you do it right and still pay the bills? He goes, I believe so. Absolutely. And and here we sit. So uh, so I thought it's worth talking about. So stop merely saying this is wrong, this is wrong, and start modeling what's right. Example, okay, so people are losing their mind right now, and I talked. To, we talked a little bit about this before we came on. <clears throat> the other day, I'm sitting there talking to um, Paula, it's a Paula, and, and my lovely bride, Rachel, and she uh, probably gets a call, and it's Chris, 
Waterman, you know him. And he was, uh, he said, there's a shooting out here, like downtown Castle Rock. That's a little slice of, you know, um, of, uh, of, of the U.S. that's still this conservative pocket that believes in values and all this other stuff. It's just, it's our safe place. It's our happy place and all that stuff. We're blessed to live there. Amazing police officers, amazing community, just good people, you know, for the most part. You're always going to have, you know, some whatever, <laughs> some others. But there's shots fired downtown from one of our local spots, like B&Bs, where we do our Bible study. I meet people there. I was there the other day with uh, the 86er and his brother Chris. Um, and he's like, yeah, there's shots being fired down here. And, uh, you know, and I'm meeting Jason down there. So we break there, go down. It's all roped off. Evidently, the story goes as such from what we know right now. Um, this guy's acting weird and stopping cars and yelling at people and just trying to get people to stop. And they're going by. So they called the police. They came out, talked to him. And, um, you know, kind of, I don't know if they warned him. I don't know what happened with that conversation. He goes around the corner. They say they hear shots fired, shoots out the windows of a minivan. I saw that it was all busted out, kind of waved the cops, not going to bother him, but I'm like, Hey, like, Hey Jimmy. And just kind of waved while they're doing their, you know, investigation stuff holes all through the building right there in the little section between B and B cafe and the bank, like wow. right through there. Then he just, I guess, empties the mag, dumps the gun and then they arrest him. So he's in custody. But, um, uh, that's one example. Another example, standing in Safeway and I'm ringing something out. I just swung, swung by on the way home. And this guy, with this big old mask on, and I get that anxiety with mask on, whatever. But uh, he's just done. Like whatever he's ringing up, where like the bridge too far was the, the, um, the cling wrap, right? Oh, the no. cellophane, right? The, yeah, the, yeah. And it wouldn't ring up. And he's just, this is it. This, I'm done. And he just yells that we got to, we, I can't believe we got to ring up our own, you know, Groceries. Yeah, S word, right? And then he throws the cellophane at the um, at the machine, looks at me, and I look at him, <laughs> and well, I'm, I'm searching my mind, and nothing constructive is coming to mind. So I pray about this. I'll work on. I'll get it better next time. But like the stuff I'm saying is kind of what's wrong with you, and and sarcastic, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. So I think it was it was a pro, maybe a step up for me to just be silent and look at him, like, yeah, what are we doing, you know? And I'm glad I didn't say anything that escalated and later really actually thought about like, how could you help this guy next time? Now that I'm ready, now that I screwed it up once, I'll say like, can I help you with something? But nothing was coming because it was defeated. He's this defeated dude. And the one thing I know to be for certain is this is not about cellophane. There's no telling what it's about. And I don't know. We say everyone you Just meet. You know? breaking point. Right, right. Every person you meet, there's facts unknown, right? So I have no idea, but it all... Like, this is right here. This is his Michael Douglas falling down moment right here. Oh. You know, he's screaming and throwing stuff and all that. But, you know, who's to say that next time it's not a pistol or whatever? So he leaves, and everybody kind of does the uncomfortable, like, ooh, whatever. And they look around, just kind of smiling. And the lady that comes over that's like the manager that's good, that looks at all the stuff that now she's got to take back. He's got way too much to be in that lane anyway. <clears throat> Self-checkout. And now she goes on a rant because she's got to clean it up and calling him names and screaming and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, this is broken on every level. Yeah, yeah, like there isn't even like a adult in the room right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, so that's another one. Yet another one is uh, 86 was checking in with his brother to come down. He drives down here from Montana to train, as you know. And they come down here and the, the Hampton Inn in uh, Castle Rock is under construction and there's scaffolding. You can't even see the building. It's just covered. And he tells this guy, Fernando, I think is on, maybe I'm making that up, but he goes, hey, Fernando, man, I gotta, gotta tell you, man, when I checked in, I didn't see all the scaffoldings and the guy's on the computer like, and he goes, I didn't see all the scaffolding stuff. You know, this looked beautiful, but I didn't see all this in the pictures. Like he's joking, right? And the guy goes, and your point? Just typing like all mad. And he goes, oh, wait, yeah, sorry, Fernando. And he goes, and he said something like, is that gonna work for you? And he goes, yes, sir. And he goes, it's Fernando. Like, sir like you just imply that i'm a man like it's just a weird time right yeah. now people are touchy and it's weird right yeah. so that's the that i think people kind of are on edge. They're, they're on edge and and rightly so in some in some instances meaning that that manifests differently in some people you should be on edge that this country's being dismantled before your eyes and now they're coming for our children yeah. like re- literally when they're trying to claim what's best for your children and cut the parents out of that equation and everything leads to destruction you should be on edge but is it motivating or is it destructive? Like, are you going to shoot up the Castle Cafe? Or are you going to, in some minivan? Well, somebody was in it. It was an occupied van. Somebody's oh, in it. And they blew out the, black, uh, the, the back glass. And as I understand, nobody was hurt. But that's, awesome. that's just by chance. You know what I mean? So, so I think people, uh, I think they need someone like in anything else, someone to model. Maybe adult behavior. Maybe tension in this time of strife and i think as christians it's our job to do that so uh let's go 
to distractions. You've heard me say this, and I'll explain the Panera Bread. You know the Panera Bread oh, yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yep. so I would go to these meetings when I was starting the business to go network of all the shakers and movers that are trying to, to, to make public safety better. Schools, churches, civic groups, law enforcement, fill in the blank. Seems like there was always Panera Bread, like this abundance of bread and, and you know, whatever, the, the schmears and all this other business. And th- I didn't see a lot of what was going on between the Panera Bread. It was like, hey, well, you know, this was a good session. Thank the speaker. We'll see you next month. And there wasn't really a lot going on other than those meetings. And I was like, I, I stopped going because I'm like, I know one thing for certain that's not going to fix this is Panera Bread, yeah. right? Love Panera Bread, but that's not going to fix this. It's what you do between the Panera Bread, right? So that that's what I'm seeing quite a bit is there's now there's these small groups and some of them are Christian groups. And I brought this up and uh, to, to my group. It's like, are we just going to meet and talk about it? Because I think now more and more people sitting around saying someone should do something in your mind somehow becomes you did something. Like, what have you done? Well, I sat around and said somebody should do something, you know, but in their mind, it checked it off as like being constructive. Yeah. Sitting around with a group of guys and talking about it. And then, you know, obviously if it's a Bible study and you're growing in yourself and you're learning more about God's word and you're learning about all the stuff it is investing in you for kind of what's next, but you see the start, but then there's ne- the next step gets delayed by six months or a year or whatever. And these groups are just really sitting around venting and they're not in action. There's no forward movement. It's just, sit, let's sit and discuss about it. You complain about stuff, and I say, yeah, right? Huh, what? And then I do it. You go, yeah, Jimmy, you tell him. Yeah, those guys are all jacked up, right? <laughs> and we go, ready, break, and let's just call it a week. You know. So that's what I'm seeing, and I think that there, there has to be that forward motion of, uh, I'm sorry, forward movement to where there's a lot of activity but no forward movement. You know. And that's, that's where I think we need to refocus. Yeah, I see it like uh, the tires are spinning. There's no traction. Let's get some yeah. the tires on the road moving forward, moving yeah. in a direction. Well, it'd be like, you know, with the car analogy, we're sitting in the driveway and we're revving the engine. It's a neutral, you know, it's in park. It's like, Hey brother, this sounds great. We're not going anywhere, but BK, this is going to get old in a minute. Like it sounds great. It's American muscle right there, but we're not going anywhere. <laughs> it's like, that's going to, that's got a shelf life, right? It's like, Hey, let's get, let's get moving right here. And especially when what we're talking about is not moving forward. It's like, there's, there's the thing right there, man. Let's go ahead and pick any forward gear and dump the clutch. Um, distractions. I want to talk about that. Like the elections, sometimes when, when we hear things that are untrue or not constructive, we need to come back with something that's constructive, right? Or, or, or true. Um, example, if we could just elect someone who would fill in the blank, in the blank. right? That, that is, that is not going to happen. This is a, we, the people problem. We've talked about this in the stand of the gap initiative is that this is how this works. We, the people act right. Okay, we'll call it moral and just. Yep. And then we elect, let's just call them representatives of moral and just. Maybe we even call them representatives, right? You see where I'm going with this? So if we're not moral and just, the representatives to say we're just, give me a word that's not a cuss word because I'm struggling right oh. now. Uh, oh. We're jack wagons. I like you, yeah, jack, jack wagons. wagons. So, so if that. we're all jack wagons and we elect a representative, he's going to be a jack wagon if he's truly a representative, right? So that. You take that a step further, it means the only way to fix this is start with us. Yep. And then simultaneously look for somebody that represents us and, and look at the problems and all that kind of stuff. But it must start at that level. To be honest, it, it must be start with we the people, elect representatives that are moral and just, and then don't just, and I had this um, conversation, I was, I, was, um, I was just talking to one of our, our elected officials, and, um, and I said that. It's like, we can't just elect you and then say, you got it. And then, and then back to Netflix, right? Yeah. We've got to start showing up. And Rachel was at the school board meeting because I couldn't last night. And I'm catching the next one. And uh, we're going to start, you know, s- showing up and supporting these things. We, we are doing many things, actually. But uh, speaking our piece because we're getting overwhelmed by the other, pe- the other side that's speaking their piece. So that nice. leads yeah. to destruction. But they believe it, right? So at some point, you have to go plant seeds like God do the rest, right? But a lot of people are planting the seeds of dissent and dissension and, and division, division, but sure. not the truth and unity, right? So that's, that's on us to do that. Uh, a marriage, this, I needed to hear this. I needed to hear this recently in a devotion um, that I'm reading because I found myself saying all the time, well, marriage is under attack and our nation's under attack and this is under attack. And boy, that old Satan, you know, that it, it's easy to get into that deal and bypass righteous chastisement or God's will. 
at some point, uh, in some instances, many instances, there's you reap what you sow. Yeah. Right. So you don't get to abuse your wife and then say you're under attack by Satan when she leaves you. Does that make sense? And I don't want to go too far down this road because it could be the rest of the night. Yeah. But at some point, you reap what you sow. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So you don't get to, um, you know, um, put in all the ingredients, you know, for, I don't know, what's cowboy stew. Cowboy stew when you wanted brownies. And you're like, man, I keep ending up with cowboy stew. You're like, well, because it's the wrong ingredients. You've been cooking cowboy stew. That's what that's where this was headed. That was the time. That was the ingredients or whatever. End up with brownies, whatever. Those are both good, so that didn't really work. So <laughs> anyways, I'm just saying, your intent was here, but you never went down that road. There was there was accountability at some point. So you like to talk about accountability, but now you built a horrible marriage, and now it's the attack of Satan, which overall, I know it is. You know, it's like we don't, we 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 battle you know, principalities, I get all that stuff, but sometimes it does manifest, uh, manifest as flesh, of people in the flesh, and you have to do your part. So you don't get to pick and choose the parts you like. So when it comes back around, like I said, accountability is out of fashion right now, but it's still the truth, right? Um, so we need to understand that and say, I'm going to do better. So I'm going to model this. And um, man, Paula and, and, and Rachel and I, we're, we're meeting and talking about this. And, and as you are vulnerable and you say something about that, you see all the people that are in the same thing. And then you realize this is a, this is horrible. Like this is so many, this is everybody Yeah. like th- th- that could, that could do this. They could understand that the Bible's interpretation or instruction on how you live your life. There isn't another way. There isn't a proven other way, right? That's going to lead to any kind of joy or any kind of a uh, model once again to show our children. <sighs> Just getting going. That's right. I don't know where to start. Um, oh, man. I told you, I gave you a chance to get out of here, right? Equity. Are you familiar with this term? I am. Do you kind of understand where that's going? Because the more I learn about it, the more I want to throw up in my mouth and well, just can and not receive it. Yeah. Uh, so where do I start? Other night, the other night at, um, at Brave Church, there was a, a get together. I'm guessing cl- cl- rough, just under a thousand people, I'm guessing. Wow. And it was called Biblical Citizen, maybe. Um, didn't really know what to expect, but there were some people that are stepping up that I know uh, that, are, that are running for office and a lot of these movements. And the speaker was fantastic. And she was kind of breaking this stuff down on a different level. And um, they played the Dennis Prager. If you haven't seen that, then look up the Dennis Prager video on equity because it's one of the best explanations that I've ever seen. But basically, this is what this means. So if you're white... You're just out of luck, brother. I'm sorry. Just to go, whatever. I think I heard some silliness from the, the White House coming in or from the, from the government talking about the most vulnerable. Who's the most vulnerable, right? Well, it ain't you. I know that because you're white, right? This is me playing equity. Um, so women, most vulnerable. You know, people of color, most vulnerable. Um, LGB, element of P, whatever, most vulnerable. Yeah. Um, all these people are the most vulnerable, right? So they, they deserve more than, than you, white guy and white entitlement, right? So being a person that isn't black or white, right? And I had this discussion with Rachel earlier. So I am um, of Asian descent on my mother's side. Yeah. I refuse your equity. You know, you know what that takes from me? If I accepted that, you're going to devalue and dishonor the hard work that I've put in. The many, many years I served this country and the SEAL teams, the hardest thing you can possibly do in the military, in my yeah. opinion, um, you take all that away. The stuff that I earned, that's the gold right now. The hard times in my life were the gold and you take all that away. Hmm. Saying you didn't earn anything, right? We owe you this because you can't do it on your own. I absolutely, absolutely disagree. I don't want it. So if, I'm, if you're putting me in that category, keep your equity, I, I, this, this equal outcome, I want zero part of it, neither of my children, right? I'm not going to raise them to accept your equity yeah. right? because you're going to harm them. And when you want to harm my children, I lose my sense of humor really quickly. Very quickly. So if we're going to add value to our future, I'm all in. But if you want to lead them to destruction and try to harm them by taking away anything that they could potentially earn through hard work, we're not friends anymore. So that's, that's, that's in a nutshell where I stand on this equity thing. Well, right. I feel like there's a lot more there. There's so much more. I could you pull know? the pin on that Jimmy Graham grenade. Well, and, and, okay. and, you know, and Rachel being of Norwegian descent, 
she got no equity either. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's right there. But I'm like, no, you do actually. So don't, this is a strange thing. Like it's one of those things where it's like a data girl that was in, in, in human resources and she worked in um, like the, um, what do you call them? Um, not human resources. I'm, I'm missing the social services, right? Oh, okay. With, okay. with battered people and that stuff. Where, where that, the more you're kind of abused, the more credibility, the more street cred you have, this kind of thing. Um, my kids will be judged by the content of their character, yep. not the color of their skin, right? That, that, is, that is good stuff. That's, that's good teaching right there. That's a good way to live. And they, they know they have to, um, to live it, to earn it, to be that model. It's my job to be that model to say this is a healthier way. From, from me living my life and saying that those gold pieces are the ones that I struggled and Rachel and I prayed and we ran out. Like I, I, I tell people all the time, I think Jimmy ran out of gas on the floor of duty to act in off Park Street and Castle Rock back in 2013. Yep. Right. I was like, I remember talking to God. I'm out. I got nothing left. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I prayed about this and you totally didn't deliver. So it's, it's on you now. And that's when it started getting good. And that wasn't when it got easy, by the way, because you, know yeah. you know the ride. So we took hard work. And I remember just coming home dirty and working for the railroad and working for integrity fundraising and, you know, all good work in its own sense. But it just wasn't my calling, but it was, it was my path, right? And I needed to see it. And I thank God for that. And now you want to take that away. You want to take that from my kids? Are you high on drugs? Which pain, I don't, even, don't even answer that, right? <laughs> if that's the people I'm talking to, it's like, that's the deal. So I don't think that uh, until we come to terms with the truth, you want an example, don't you? I would love to hear Well, example. you're in luck because you're in the right place because I'm feeling truth tonight. <laughs> if you want to end, do you want to end racism? Yes. Against white people? This isn't for you, right? <laughs> this is for them. This is, do you want to end racism and then dramatic pause against white people you know think about that and if you do let's let's end racism let's let's be done with it but you don't get a monopoly on racism because you're black you simply don't yeah. you don't get to prove you're not racist by going doing racist things against white people it just proves that you're racist right so that must be understood it must be said out loud with boldness do you want to end sexism a dramatic pause against men right so this isn't this isn't a monopoly it's sexism so I have a son and I have daughters, and they will know this. They will understand this, right? They'll understand boundaries. They'll understand their, their strengths that are specific to the way that God created them. them. That's, that's the deal. And they are, they are co-heirs, and they're equals just like my wife and I are. Yes, I'm the head of the household, but we are co-heirs, so she gets to say whatever she wants. Yep. And so do I, and we honor each other, and we figure it out. Um, uh, do you want to end religious persecution? Dramatic pause. Against Christians. Right. So and I'm teaching my kids this because they're asking me these questions and we do the the old accountability, stupid accountability again out of fashion. Flip it over. I understand what you said, sweetheart. And I know that maybe something I said or your mom said got you to say that. But I don't know that you understand the, the context of this or the, 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 the gravity of this situation. If you flip that over, would it have been OK for somebody to say that to you? Right. So you got a red shirt on, they got a blue shirt on, you know, and you said it. If they said it about you or your president or you name it. Like somebody said that the other day is that we do owe honor to the presidency and Joe Biden for being in that seat. That's hard to hear, but it's true, right? If you damage the presidency because you don't like the president, but the seat of the presidency and then your guys in, well, you still did the damage to that seat, right? So that's, that's the, what we still have to kind of respect and honor. Um, absolutely. You don't get my respect as a human being on a, on a certain level if you decide to kill children. Like if you, you know, you know how I stand on that, you know, pro-Jesus, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, and I won't flex on those ever. So if you're in that camp, yeah, I, I struggle with that, and we're not on the same side, yeah. right? But I can respect you, like, to not condemn you and damn you to hell, right? So as Christians, we're not supposed to do that anyways. So to model that kind of respect, um, it, it, it's not um, intuitive. It's like, I don't want to respect you, but I must, Right. So now I got to dig deeper in Jimmy Graham and find that guy that's going to rise up and show my kids how to do that. Because if I don't, they're not going to know. Yep. And then and, and I said this in the pers just to set perspective. We we're on a Bible study the other day and uh, said, you can you can complain about all the people not working and the work ethic and all this stuff where I'd rather just smoke drugs and watch Netflix than come and serve food to people and make some money. I totally get that. And I was like, or you can think about it as Christian Graham is going to have job security. You know, people are going to want to hire, you know. Rebecca, Sarah, Christian Eden, yep. because they have that, they're going to be at the diamond. In the earth. Like, oh man, 
do you want a job, young lady? You're like, I'm, I'm only 21. Right, but you work. Yeah. Can you please come run this company? Because <laughs> we can't find people that work. So those things, the, these, these fads, these cycles, these, um, you know, this um, flavor of the week, this, this won't hold. This is not a sustainable thing. But um, I, I'm teaching them right now using these terms. Is it short game or long game? The short game is you go do this. The long game is people are going to remember that. And this, this comforted me, and I have no idea if this is true, because we might be home with Jesus. But I'm saying if we, um, we say it this way here. The interview started three years ago. Three years ago. Right? Yep. What if, just go on, a, go on a voyage with me right now, BK. What if three years down the road, there's a, diff- there's a turn of events, and there's a different administration, and they look back and they say, hmm, let's go back to the, uh, the, the tally board here. Back in 2021, 22, you guys were hiding behind the desk and you talked a big game, but you did nothing. And you ran for a thing and when you lost, you disappeared, whatever. They're gonna be looking for who was living their life with a little risk involved and who stood to their values. And those people may be running things then. Like I need somebody with some, uh, some backbone and I know it's tough, but I remember you back then. You come over here and run this thing. So maybe that's the thing that can help you go to sleep tonight. Like, you know what? I'm going to go be BK. This person has some fortitude. They, yeah, yeah. They there's, there's some kind of you know, intestinal them. fortitude. Um, and again, the more that that crowd thins out, the more you, you're highlighted. We've said it this way. That light that we didn't even know was shining until the room started dimming. Evening comes and you're like, somebody left that light on. I noticed that light because it's so dark, right? That's what's happening right now. But the problem is, is people are going, they're dimming their light because they don't want to be noticed. That's not good. No. Right on. So to be that model. Um, man, I wrote this down. Do I want to say it? I'm okay. I, I wanted to call people out, right? I'm not saying you don't care. I'm asking, do you care enough to do something about it? Yep. Right? You know that we went, we went all around to, to six different churches, talked to many, many people about a couple things about what do you stand for? You must know what you stand for. You need to spend time figuring that out. What do you stand for? Then you got to say, what's my hill to take? Because yours might not be mine, might not be mine. You can't take on all things. You can't spread yourself too thin or you run out of steam. So pray about that. And that thing that's yours to take, like I'm very, uh, you know, like with, with the protecting children, yeah. both alive and not yet out of the womb, but, but alive, right? So meaning like children you see right here and then, and then um, the abortion deal with uh, children that are still in the womb. I am very passionate about protecting them and I always will be. Um, so I want to support people in that. I want to go out and get busy doing that. Um, and you, somebody else might, like uh, my wife is health freedom. Like for our children, you don't tell them what drugs to put in their body. You don't tell them whatever in their parent. I'll get educated and make that decision. So what's your hill to take? And then do you care enough to do something about it? Of course, everybody cares. I'm asking, do you care enough to actually do something? Because I see a lot of talk and not a lot of action. Now, I'm not going to be the guy that says nobody's doing anything. Why? Because there's so many people doing things. I'll throw them out there again, just off the top of my head. You know, Jack Hibbs, look him up. Uh, you know, as far as the, uh, um, a leader, a spiritual leader that, um, that, that needs to be understood and needs to be followed. Man, I could remember, wish I could remember Pastor Jeff's last name, Strausentraub. Oh, Strausentraub. Sorry, brother. Um, amazing guy locally yeah. at Brave Church. Like just off the chain leadership. Go, brother. What do you need from me? Um, Lila Rose, live action, saving babies. Uh, Alternatives Pregnancy Center, um, Family Research Council, um, Community CIT. Dang it, teams. Some community. <laughs> I'll give him a second. But anyways, Tim Throckmorton, that's his name. We need to have um, those people need support. So people are saying nobody's not. I'm like, there's many people doing things. They need your support, and they go. I just like to say nobody's doing anything. I'm going to go back to watching Longmire. I don't know why I've been on the episodes of Longmire. <laughs> I've been saying that all weekend, right? Time so you want to hang out and watch, you don't want to binge watch Longmire, and that's cool. But now, if that's all you're doing and you're not moving the needle toward good, I, you're, I don't hear your complaints anymore, right? So, um, again, that, that integrity, that get up off the couch and do something. Uh, for example, um, this... February 4th, 6.30 p.m., in the year of our Lord, 22, because these all aired at a different time. But uh, we are hosting a meet and greet 
for a gentleman that's running for the house seat district 45, which is castle rock in the immediate surrounding areas. Right? So we threw this out there. You saw me out there. I'm like trying to figure out social media so I can invite people, but I'm kind of a little bit of tone in my voice is calling them out. Like I'm sick of this. I'm sick of talking. We're done talking, you know, but put down your Panera bread. It's time to get out here. So February 4th, I said, be there, go meet Bill Jack. There's a man stepping, a good man stepping into the arena. I, I met him, had breakfast with him, talked to him, aligns with my values. Now it's time to start supporting him and get him in there to do this on behalf of us, to step in that arena on the behalf of me and my children, and I need you showing up. And this will be on a Friday. This is on a Friday night, 6.30 okay. p.m. to 8.30, maybe 9 o'clock, at the Lowell Ranch south of Castle Rock. So if you go on Facebook, I think it's on, on Abel Shepherd. Go to Abel Shepherd. Go on Facebook. Go on Jimmy Graham, Facebook. Uh, check that out. And there's a, the little sign-up thing so we know because we're hosted, co-hosting it with uh, Kim Libertor, amazing woman. Um, so uh, Kim and Jim our friends and we're uh somebody's got to take that step and she said would you co-host it i'm like i would love to co-host something with you so we're gonna um you know get as many people as we can there to hear him out and we ask if he aligns with your values you need to support him you know and this is and i don't mean vote for him i mean support him like get there learn his value get learn what's going on and then support and when he gets attacked you need to counter and when he gets attacked that arrow's coming towards his back you need to put your back there well your shield would be better but uh, you know what position or role like Castle Rock Councilman? Yeah, so or? district. So so at the state at the state. State. But the district forty five is basically if you look at it, it's Castle Rock and yeah. then a little bit of the surrounding area. Yep, that's right. So it's a state level election. Yes. This November. Yes. November twenty twenty two. Boom. In the year of our Lord. Twenty two. That's right. Um so examples, and these examples are close to home, so you'll you will uh, recognize these. Uh, pro marriage groups. So you know, we've got we've got that group. Pro marriage group. Pro-life support that we did last year, those are, those are examples. If that's calling to you, then look up. Call me. Let us know. We'll identify a front for you if you pray about that. If they feel like I'm gonna find, I'm looking to find so-and-so, we probably know somebody that's doing it already, and you can join them. Monday night Zoom Bible study. We host one of those. Uh, Jack Hibbs, again out of California. We sit around with uh, you know men, women. Uh, I, the the pro-marriage group is a men's group, that's right? Cool. So guys open it up. We want them to come out of the shell and all that stuff. And that's been fantastic, by the way. Uh, that's every other Friday at the Lowell Ranch down there, same place we're doing the meet and greet. Uh, on Monday nights, we did the Zoom Bible study. That's going to be the Jack Hibbs Sunday service. We watch it the next day in its entirety, take notes, and then we talk about it. We just apply real life to that, and he does a great job leading through that. Uh, demand for better school security. Uh, you're going to start hearing more of me, back, you know, both through this uh, Colorado Christian University Centennial Institute, where I'm a fellow on community safety, making uh, publishing articles uh, in, in multiple publications nationally uh, and locally here. Getting, you know, I'm not saying getting in people's faces because I don't want to be respectful, but it's not okay with me that we raised money, that we earmarked money, you know, it's going to be three years in March yeah. for STEM. For STEM. And half of the money that was celebrated, thank you, Douglas County, for protecting our schools, is still in the bank collecting interest. Doing it's not okay with me. Yep. I don't, that doesn't set well. If uh, I, You know this about me. I take it personally when children get hurt, mm -hmm. and I kick myself for not doing enough. Yep. So I feel like I need to do not more now, the, the, the calm before the storm, so that I feel less of that then. You know, I get grace and I'm not walking around sad all day, but I really do. Um, I, I take that. It's heavy to me. And I say, what have you been doing, man? You know, get, get after it. You're not pushing hard enough. You're not getting in people's faces and you're not taking your three minutes of the board meetings and calling people out. Right. And I think it's time to start doing that respectfully again, but boldly. Well, Audit. I've heard stories about you meeting with, let's call them security officers, yeah. school resource officers, yep. talking about plans. What can we do? What's available? Who can I network with, for lack of a better word, for uh, perimeter security, video surveillance. That's right. So they can come to you, they can get the resource, you can, I don't want to say broker the deal, but at least get them in touch. So I am a subject matter expert on violent encounters. Yeah. I didn't know that until I sat down with the people talking about it. Yeah. And I'm like, you guys know next to nothing. <laughs> I am a subject matter expert. I'm the only person in this. There's maybe one more dude that I know of in this county that's been a protective officer. Like your job was to protect. On your badge, it said protective officer, right? I'm not saying law enforcement. That's a different thing. But there has not been a subject matter expert in the conversation yet regarding our kids' safety. That, that bothers me. Now, I, they've come and they've talked and all this stuff, and we say to do these things, and then they say, well, we can't because this guy and he's got some. They want a widget. They want a thing they can pay for and be done with it. The, the, the issue 
is people. The solution is people. Technology exists to make the human being more capable and effective. But you don't talk about technology until you've got your human beings yeah. with a plan trained, ready to respond, right? It'll always be a human being. When there's an emergency, the solution will always be a human being. Maybe it's a police officer, maybe it's a security guard, maybe it's an armed citizen, maybe it's a teacher, you name it. By the way, teachers have been talking about, well, it's not my job to protect kids. It's, I got to keep them. This, came up, this just came up in the school, one of the school board meetings where we were named, not in a good way. My job as a teacher is not to protect kids. It's to keep them calm so that police can come in. I think this lady said, my husband, the police officer, we got to be careful about what we tell our wives about our capability yeah. and our job. You know, that you're, I'm Superman. Your job is keeping calm and I'll come in. In reality, you might not be anywhere near here. Yeah. And then they die. I didn't change what a teacher is. The world did. Our environment changed what a teacher is. It's not Mrs. McGillicuddy or the, the you know, Laura Ingalls Wilder schoolhouse yeah. teacher anymore. It's just not. And I'm sorry about that because I wish it was. It's just not. Absolutely your job to protect my kids. Now, maybe not with a gun, but with everything at your disposal, I gave you my kids alive and you give them back alive, period. Mm -hmm. That's the deal. And if we need to talk about giving you the capability to do that through other people, through resources, through this or that, then let's talk about that. But we need to talk honestly about it and not check boxes. It's, it, that ticks me off and you know that. We tick a bunch of boxes, call it good. We're about to redefine good. So I'm starting a new foundation, new association rather. Again, if we know what's wrong, what's right? We need to model right. So I am collecting, I am facilitating, I am, what's the word? Bringing together, uniting subject matter experts in different fields in a spirit, not of scarcity, but abundance. Because now, even the, even the guy, the Douglas County guy right now, he's, he's I want to sit down and offer from a subject matter expert's opinion. He was in the FBI. Fantastic investigator for the FBI. Has nothing to do with protection. No. But it got you the job because you got the credentials, you got the, the letters next to your name, but you've never done this. Can I help? The answer is no. Because we tried, right? And, and call me because if you can't get better, if we stop learning, we get dangerous. Yeah. Who's going to pay? Not him. Our kids are going to pay. So this is horrible. This is, I'm losing my, my patience with this because it's the same game. I talked to, uh, you know, Mike Peterson's trying to move the nail. I said, hey, this is the way this goes, brother. Welcome to the game. Appreciate it, but this is what we got. And then that number doesn't get forwarded and it's, ah, yeah, whatever. It's like, it's, this is the way this is going to go. So, um, so I'm gathering where we are going to, if, if we have a, uh, if you have a security team and you say they're capable, they're good to go. What? Let's redefine capable. Are they? Are they competent? Let's redefine competent. What does it mean? This this definition exists. Yeah. In in the world that I live in, it exists, and it doesn't have to be Navy SEAL, and it doesn't have to be CIA, and it doesn't have to be all that. But it means there needs to be a safety, uniform, safe, and accurate. This is already figured out, but the world doesn't use it. They just say you're capable of being a responder to a violent encounter with a fire, life and death, Oof. in a three day class. It is not possible to do that responsibly. So this is going to come and it's going to sting. And I'm not looking to go after people that have a good heart. They simply didn't know what they were doing. And it is time for accountability and for you to learn what you claim to be your profession. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next few uh, months and invite people to what is the truth about this industry. Because we know it. We're going to share it. There's going to be resources that are free and people can make safer schools in whatever state or city they're in. So I just got to think, you know, this, I just sent out a proposal. I got asked to be the national director yep. of security for this new initiative to start future schools, right? Christian schools. That's a very, very big responsibility. We take it seriously, but I can't get a conversation in my own county where my kids go to school. Yep. There's no callbacks, you know, cause, cause and, and it really bothers me that people are, are checking themselves off as a, uh, expert in this after the school after the shootings and all that and if you got bored being a teacher i get it but this new thing if it's not your gig then it's not your gig you need help and you need to do this correctly because by the time we figure out that this is a big facade it's too late we can't get those kids back so uh, we're going to lean in this year and we are going to present the truth and i will i will i'll throw it out like this prove me wrong you, you show me a better way we'll do it tomorrow but prove me wrong because i know what i'm talking about I'm all right, brother. I, I'm telling you, you know, these are my buttons. And we knew this was going to happen. I gave you a chance to you head go, for the hills, go, be line to the tree line. The leash, no, the, uh, you know, there's elections coming up. We need a strong sheriff. Yeah. So we, we've had some meetings. We're doing some more due diligence, but we're about to announce who we're going to um, be running for here soon. We got to make that call uh, and make it soon. And then just uh, try to um, get into these conversations again, meet and greets, 
Do the values align? And if they do, I'm not saying vote for them, I'm saying support. Like yeah. support isn't a one-time thing. It's like get in there and ready to take some arrows for them as well. Like we've said with my daughter regarding my daughter, there will come a day when you will, there will be a time for accountability and you will have to account for your lack of scars. That time is now. It's time to get scars, righteous scars. Don't go, you know, cut yourself up, whatever. It just means that if you're letting them take that alone, there's really no honor in that, right? So if we're going to move this, we got to move it together. That we the people, again, united we stand, divided we fall. The association, I've talked about that. We're going to be announcing that, I'm, I'm hoping, within the month. I've reached out to the people that I've ID'd for the board just to start it. There's still only three. There's going to be a gentleman that we're bringing on to run it. Uh, mostly, uh, that communication will happen on LinkedIn and some social media. I'm not strong there. You know that. I try. Do my best, whatever. But, um, but subject matter experts that every time they get in the room together once a month, the industry gets stronger yeah. and they do it again. And the industry gets stronger and having those resources available is going to be huge um, to protect the nation's children. And then I wrote down, prove it. I have no problem proving any of this. That's what it's. It, there's such a cloud or just a cluster of junk. There's so much stuff out there. And I think most of them, not all of them, most of them are well intended, but um, there's no meat on the bone, right? So that's one thing here. I just told you about the two guys that walked in the door, Nate and JD. What's up, guys? We told them about the podcast, so hopefully you're listening. To watch them change from that door right there, and then the 15 minutes that we talked about it and then gave them the tour 15 minutes later, they're like, welcome home, boys. I've been looking, I've been for, this. looking for this, this community piece. This is what I've been looking for. And there was probably six people in that room that got to witness that, and when they left, we're like, how cool was that? That just happened. <laughs> that just happened. Because Melissa met up at the boat show. <laughs> Melissa and Everett were at the boat show. And I don't even know how this conversation, I need to ask her. I don't even know how that conversation started. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, we'll swing by and check it out. He texts me the next day, emails me the next day, Nathan did. And he says, got to be honest, I thought I was coming into a shooting, you know, shooting school. Yep. Same old song and dance, the same boilerplate, whatever. I've been looking for this. Yep. You know, and asked about employment, asked about future, all this stuff. I'm like, hey, brother, let's go chat. Let's go have some Sorry coffee. Let's go. Law enforcement background, military yeah. background, great guy. Had the same shirt on as Parker. That 511, my favorite shirt that I wear too much. Oh, yeah. That shirt. <laughs> but I wasn't wearing it that day. Um, anyways, so proving it, no problem, right? But you got to look. So if you don't have the time to look, that's not, that's your fault for not knowing. But come look if there's something. Um, if there's a better way to do this, I just said it, we'll be doing it tomorrow. It just means we never stop learning. And if you do, you just became dangerous. Yep. Okay, anything to add, brothers? We bring it home. I need to get a haircut because you blew my hair back. Tonight, <laughs> it's, we, it's we, a lot of information. When we sat here and typed up the notes, man, it, 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 you know, I was like, this, this is stuff that needs to be talked about. But as I talk about it, I think that everybody, again, it's going to manifest differently. For me, this is fuel. Like when I see this stuff and I think about my kids, Man, I, I'm not I'm not laughing anymore. Like this this kind of the passivity and and uh, seeing people rising up and presenting all of these things that are one not true, two all lead to destruction, and they all equal my kids being worse off. Yeah, right. And then you know, like I love seeing like my my wife is coming alive right now. She's starting these things, and then people are coming there. They they went to the Capitol the other day doing all this stuff because man. When you, you thought you messed up when you pissed Jimmy off. You got, you just pissed Rachel off. You pissed off Rachel Graham. That's a storm. Right. Cause not only do you have my attention now, you've got hers. Right. And that's a big deal. So, um, I'm, I'm excited to see people coming alive. And I said it this way and it was hard to digest even for me when I said it was that I know we lost people and I don't want to be insensitive, but everything that we've had with shortages, with COVID, with people dying, with people almost dying, with all this other stuff and politicians, if all this happened for us to get our eyes on our kids' future again because we took them off, it's worth it. Yep. It's all worth it. To hand Rebecca Sarah Christian Eden my bill for all the stupid stuff I've done, it's not okay with me. On a core level, they don't pay my bills. Yep. I pay my bills. Right? I don't hand them debt. <sighs> All right, we're going to sign off. Please check us out. Support us. AbelShepherd.com. Please take a look for training. I don't, like I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that I was a subject matter expert. I knew that I've done this professionally. I know I've learned a lot, and I've studied at a level of efficiency that most people will never see for, forever, right? And I don't know it all. And it's not my kung fu is better than your kung fu. It's that I've 
been in amazing experiences and every one of them led to the platform that I'm sitting in right now. So please check it out. Check us out on Facebook. That's just the quickest way that we can talk to you guys on Abel Shepherd and then my personal one, Jimmy Graham. You'll see me and the boys sitting. I think you probably took the picture on the back of my tailgate drinking some coffee uh, with Christian. Stand in the Gap Initiative. That's about to get a rebirth. Now, we started Stand in the Gap Initiative in 2020. We thought there was like immediate danger coming, so we dumped a bunch of free resources into this website. You're going to see this new association launch out of Stand in the Gap Initiative in order to provide a true point to make this industry stronger. Like if this is the bad example, we will model what's right, what the right within the shootings and violent encounters. That's going to launch out of the Stand in the Gap Initiative. We'll spread it out through all our social media, but that's the website it's going to live on and be born on. Protector, uh, protectorculture.com. This is, this is kind of... This is us. This is where we're going to hang out with BK and, and talk about that. Hey, thank you. In the past couple of weeks, if you came up to me and told me to keep going, uh, they were like, can you... Can, you, can I ask you to do one every week? And we're, we're trying. We're doing our best. We are doing so much right now. Uh, but we try to get out here. And BK, thank you so much, brother. And we just talked about this recently. He puts so much work into every one of these. And they're fantastic. But to hear that they're reaching people and they're changing lives. And guys are like, you know what a guy says? Keep up the good work. But the guys that go, Jimmy, and they look you in the eye and they go... Thank you. Keep it up. Thank you for what you're doing. Keep coming. This world needs it. And it's that long, dramatic pause, and you're like, I got you, brother. I just, I just felt that. Here we go. Check this out. Um, and then able-nation.org. So just once again, Sage, we love you, brother. Bittersweet. You're breaking my heart a little bit. You're not going anywhere. You know, we know that you're going to be a part of, uh, of this community forever. You're just going to be doing out of Louisiana and, and uh, chasing your life's dream to be near family. So we love you, brother. Thank you so much. Um, again, if your an common answer is we can't afford it, reach out to Neil at able-nation.org. Maybe able to help you out. Easy application, maybe five questions, and we're going to know if we can step in and help you out financially. Again, that's not me and Neil. It's not BK. It's the community that we're proud to represent. So uh, we'll wrap it up for now. We love you guys. Until we see you again, God bless each and every one of you. Take care of one another.